welcome to another Mobile App Developer Academy video course. Today, I'm going to show you how to customize a visualization that will really hit home with your end users. The Image Layout Widget is a visually appealing, useful solution for mapping any type of spatial element over top of an image. Most often used for particular mappings than those offered by the Google Maps widget, this visualization can extend the flexibility of your app to meet very specific business needs. There are four steps to customizing the image layout visualization, and here you'll find the necessary information to include any image as an option for mapping. I'll demonstrate by mapping walking traffic over an airport terminal. You can see the image I plan to use here. I wish to see color mappings with the quantity of walking traffic through ticketing, the West Hall, the Main Cross, and so on. There are four steps necessary to make this happen. First, we'll see how to define a shapefile, the necessary HTML file to divide an image into distinct regions. Then, I'll map the location of where I place that shapefile so MicroStrategy can find the files it needs. Third, I'll paste the necessary files in certain folders so the web and mobile servers can reference them. And finally, you'll see how to use the widget in a document or app, and I'll point out some of the formatting features that are useful for mobile, like how to alter the colors or how to combine a selector for the map. Now, first, let's take care of that shapefile. I want to map out walking traffic in the airport terminal and I have that PNG file that I opened up already a moment ago. A shape file is an HTML file that uses coordinates to locate an area over a referenced background image. Photoshop or other tools can accomplish this task, but MicroStrategy offers its own as part of its SDK package. I'll show you how to use that. Just open up the .air file to use the image coordinates utility. When you open this utility, it will run the installer package. Since I've already installed mine, it will open right up. Now, once the tool has been opened, we'll be able to outline our image. Go locate the image and select it by clicking Select Image. There's my terminal f.png. When I select it, I can now start mapping my regions. As you can see, I click on the spot if I just want points. But since I'm looking to map the West Hall, I want to select Outline Region, and you'll see that green line appearing as I click in different locations, connecting the dots. I close up the box for the region and press Enter. And now I get to name my region. I'll call it West Hall. Be especially careful when naming these regions. They have to match up precisely with the elements that appear on the grid in order to display correctly. Once you're finished, press Enter. There you can see West Hall was created. Save this image by clicking Create File. Here's the file we saved on my desktop, and you can also see its path. Before moving on, we'll have to make one slight edit so that when we later move this file, the MicroStrategy I server can find its background image. For the IMG source portion of the code in the shapefile we just created, I'm going to add the relative path I plan to use. I type dot dot viz framework slash map. And then my background image's name which in this case is Terminal F. This is so the background image can be referenced when it's time to render. If in your environment these images are hosted in a different location, you'll have to specify that location here. You can also read in the shapefile the words West Hall, which was the name of the area and the coordinates that make up the endpoints for the region of the polygon for the West Hall. I'll close that and save it, and my shape file is ready to go. Since we just created our shape file, the second step will to be reference that shape file. We'll have to alter the XML file that MicroStrategy reads 
to find the options for the image layout widget. This way, we can be sure the terminal F shapefile is offered to our developers for our mobile app. One instance of that mapping file, though there are multiple, can be found in the location shown below. We're looking for the shapefile map. I'll right click to open it in a text editor like Notepad so that I can add an entry. Notice it already has an entry for the out of the box options for the image layout widget. We've got a world map coordinates, which you saw at the beginning of this video, where you can see the polygons are given the role of country, and its displayed name is Countries of the World. What you'll have to do is create a new entry into the shapefile map XML file. I've already taken care of that for this demonstration, and here's the entry I added. Where it says shape key, I added terminal to identify the shapefile. Shape type is a polygon since we want areas rather than points on a map. Role has been selected as state because state is the geo role associated with the attribute that I plan to use with my widget. Thus, any attribute with the state geo role could be used with my widget. Next, importantly, the name. This is the name that will display when I try to choose this type of map from a list of all of the possible image layouts for my document. Finally, the shapefile is the actual physical location of the shapefile we created. Make sure to use the viz framework slash map location reference because even though we haven't specified the save location yet, that is where we'll be placing it in the next step. You'll notice there are a few other optional criteria specified for the other entries to the shapefile XML. Those handle caching for the images, but we won't be going in depth on those in this video. So I'll save a copy of the shapefile map XML file on my desktop, and you can see all three of the files we've worked with so far. There are the PNG background image, the shapefile HTML file, and the shapefile map XML file we just completed. I'll need to copy and paste them to the following three locations. First, I'll place them in the location where we barred the XML file from in order to edit it. I'll take all three of the files, right click, and select paste. If given the option, copy and replace the files since my intention is replacing the old shapefile XML file, I'm pressing cancel since I prepared this in advance. We'll have to do the same thing in the second and third locations. That's so that the web server and the mobile server can reference the files. With all three of those locations updated, with the new Terminal F shapefile, the mapping XML file, and the Terminal F background PNG image, I'll need to restart my web server, and it should be good to go, ready for us to create a document. So far, we've accomplished the first three steps of this process. Now we can work on the last part. First, let's take a look at the underlying report that I plan to map out over top of my image. Again, Notice how the region names match up precisely with what I named the areas in the HTML shapefile. We've got the East Hall, West Hall, Main Cross, and so on. Now, I'll take this report and place it into a dashboard that I plan to view on my mobile device. Add that data set, and then drag it in as a grid sizing it to take up the approximate full size of the mobile screen like so. And just like any widget, I'll right click and go to properties and formatting for the grid and declare the appropriate type of widget on the widget tab. In mobile widgets, this is the image layout widget. Now, in widget properties for the shape file, I should be able to select my PHL Airport Terminal F 
the one I created and referenced in the XML file. Remember, this comes from the name portion of what's included in that shapefilemap.xml. When I select it, I'll be able to choose display modes between automatic, points on the graph for each region, or areas, the polygons I outlined when defining the HTML file using the SDK tool. I'll choose areas for this example. When I click OK twice and save my document, as image test in the map dashboards folder, I can view it on my mobile device. There's the name image test, and you can see the regions that I mapped. Here's the widget functioning as planned. Tap on one of the regions, and you'll see the results from the report for the distinct regions. For example, North Hall shows a walking traffic statistic of 35. Now, if I want to use this widget as a selector to target another grid or change the colors of the selection on this widget, I'll need to go back to my document in web and edit. The trick to changing the displayed colors of the region is that it has to be done using a threshold. So what I'll do is add a quick threshold that changes the fill color. So it's the fill colors of the thresholds that drive the color of the areas in the widget display. Now, when I save and navigate back to my mobile device, the two regions that change colors in my grid also change the areas in the widget. Next, I'll show how to use this widget as a selector of another grid or other object on my document. If I go to the document in web, in design mode, and shrink my widget to be about half the screen, I can insert another grid meant to be a target for the widget selections. I right click on hall, the attribute I wish to use as a selector, and click select targets. I highlight the other grid, just like any other time in MicroStrategy I want to tie two objects together like this. I click the check mark for OK and save. Now, over in my mobile device, when I tap on a region of the graph, I can see that it's controlling what displays in the targeted grid. And that's it for this video course of the Mobile App Developer Academy. I think you'll now be ready to use the image layout widget to effectively map your data, and I wish you the best of luck in doing so.